Liverpool are the favourites to win the Premier League. Obviously, after that, come from behind victory against Brighton. But I suppose more importantly, that 0-0 draw between Manchester City and Arsenal. Jürgen Klinsmann uh, back with us. Jürgen, who's going to win the league? Well, I really wish Jürgen Klopp to win the league. Absolutely. You know, I mean, he obviously now announced that he will leave this, this uh, long and wonderful adventure with Liverpool. Um, and I hope he gonna, he's going to leave with uh, the, the, the title. Uh, I think he would deserve it. I know it's going to be a race until the very last day. It's going to be uh, dramatic. And the other two teams you know, have a big say in that. But I personally just hope that Jurgen Klopp gets awarded for all he did the last eight years at uh, Anfield. It'll be the fairy tale ending. It's the first time you've been on, isn't it, since everything happened at the weekend? Have you changed your pick as to who's going to win it? Well, uh, my pick was always Man City. Yes. That's why I asked if you're going to change it. <laughs> Help. <laughs> I can't offend you here, Craig. I, I still think there is a... There's a lot of hurdles to get over for Liverpool. OK. I do agree with Jürgen. I think if you're a neutral and you're, you're not in the sort of bitter, I hate that team sort of camp, it would be an unbelievable story. And by the way, I think anything better than winning the league when he did and, win, and winning the Champions League. Because they've had the Asian Cup, the African Cup of Nations to deal with, and uh, my tape's out where... Simicas was out, Alexander's out, Andy Robertson was out, Kanati was out, there was only Van Dyke at one point, and Allison. So to be where they are, right, to be where they are with what... And, and there have been a lot of injuries this season for clubs like Man United and, and Newcastle and Tottenham. But to me, Arsenal and Man City, it's not been too bad. Whereas Liverpool have... So are you getting to a point here? Like, who's going to win the league? Well, you really didn't think I was going to go down all those games, did you? Well, no, I didn't. I just wanted you to answer the question, as opposed to saying Liverpool oh, brilliantly I was, I, to be I, top of the table. See, I, I, I finally, after years, <laughs> I finally show uh, a sort of nice side and you, you know, shoot I, me I, down. Dan accused me of Liverpool TV yesterday <laughs> because... Uh, I'm going to stick with... It, what, I'm going to stick with the side that I said was the biggest threat to Man City from day one. And you know who that is. You're going to go with Arsenal. I'm sticking with the side. If it's not going to be Man City, wow. I'm sticking with the side that I said was the biggest threat to City, in my opinion. Now, some of the boys thought it was Liverpool. I personally have always felt it was Arsenal. I was disappointed at the weekend. They didn't get on the front foot more, but they made a conscious decision. And by the way, I was talking about earlier, that defence, particularly those two centre-halves, were outstanding. Right. But others are going to have to falter now. That's the problem with that tactic. The... The three points for them would have painted a different picture. Right. So I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go if it's not... I'm going to... Oh, Jesus, God, man. <laughs> <laughs> Stop waffling! <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal to win the league. Arsenal to win the league. Wow, All OK. Right. Well, you well, don't think it's going to be City, do you? You think... I think City aren't the City that we think they are. Right, so why... So that's a 50-50 call, then? Well, not, <laughs> not necessarily. I'm going to go for Ar Arsenal to win... Yeah, Arsenal. Uh, Jürgen, obviously, Arsenal went in and played very different football that maybe we normally associate <laughs> with them. Only, what, 27 28% possession. How difficult is it to pull off what they did over 90 minutes against Manchester City? Or how disappointing is it that they didn't go, as Craig say, and actually go for the win? Well, if that was the match plan then you, and you get away with a tie, then it, the match plan worked out. You know, now is it uh, nice to watch? No. Is it frustrating then for the opponent, <laughs> Man City? Yes, very, very frustrating. Uh, because when you bunker in and you park the bus, then uh, you, find, you have to find ways somehow kind of to, to break through and score a goal. And uh, you maybe rely on set pieces or here and there across. You need, you need to go kind of old school in a certain way. So, um, but it worked out. They got their point that they wanted. Um, and they frustrated Manchester City and uh, yeah. Uh, so be it. Is it uh, fun to watch for us? Neutral ones? <laughs> Neutral mm. <laughs> uh, No, no. <laughs> if you go to Liverpool and draw, which they did, wasn't a great game either, by the way, and then you go to City, play the way they did. And I don't know what the stats were, but David Rea had, like, you know, could have sat and had a, a cappuccino, really. Yeah, I one, mean, shot had... at one shot on target. Why laugh? I don't know why a cappuccino, but they... <laughs> Cup of tea. <laughs> Cup of tea. What is it, Mario? Is it whatever your drink, whatever your drink is, I don't know what it is. The drink of choice. But the one thing I would say, if the loop, if you go, if you go to those two sides, 
you play those two sides at home and win, Liverpool and City, you draw with them away, and you don't win the league, it's going to be tough on you. Right. And, and the other side of it is, if Arsenal don't win the league, there are, of course there are games they will look back and think, well, we threw that one away, or we didn't do that, or we didn't... But if the question is, did Arsenal leave anything on the table at the Etihad, the answer is yes. Because they're way better than what we saw. Right. But they made a decision that, that if they could nick something, that was going to be fine. But that's only, that's only fine come the end of the season if you're on top of the league. Because then you'll look back and say, you know, what, what, what did we lose? We should have gone at Man City. Because we never saw anything in Saka. No. You know, he decided to play Jesus and he worked hard defensively, but didn't offer a lot going forward. And, you know, Havertz was sort of, you know, working hard, but not, not doing a lot. And so they left a lot of what has been really great about Arsenal this season. They left it on the table. They made a conscious decision. And if Arteta wins the league at the end, that'll be the right thing to do and the right thing to have done. If, if they don't, I think they'll look back and say, do you know what? Looking at what Liverpool did to Man City at, the, at Anfield and they crawled away with a point City, we could have gone there and, and taken three points, but we chosen chose to do it a different way. And only time will tell whether that was the right tactic to go to the Etihad with. Uh, Arteta was asked about this in the press conference ahead of the clash against Luton. This is what he's had to say about those tactics. Leave your ego aside and your ideology aside and do what you have to do to win the game. I thought the team was mentally really strong and clever the way they did it, Shane. Um, I, I think that says that Arteta intended to come and defend. I'd probably expect... You could, you could switch out the word win for draw, could you? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Or, or more to the point... Um, keep it nil-nil to about 75th minute and then all of a sudden now you start taking a couple of chances maybe as, as City get a little bit de desperate or a little bit frustrated but certainly the intention of Arsenal going into that game was, was to defend as, they, as they've done all season long um, every single body chipping in including Jesus and Saka as, as, as needed and then as the game drew on and you got to the later stages of the game can you nick one late on? With the introduction of the Trossard or Martinelli late on, does that open things up? Does that provide uh, opportunity for, for Havertz? As, as we've seen Arsenal do time and time again uh, during the course of the season in scoring late on. So that clearly was, that clearly was the tactic. Get to 75, 80 minutes at nil-nil and let's see what we can nick from here. But at the very worst, we come out of this with a point. Job done. The only thing I would say, the only team in recent times to obviously topple Man City for the Premier League has been Liverpool, right? And the COVID times. And maybe there's been the odd game that City have pushed them back and had periods of domination. But Jurgen Klopp has never succeeded in taking a backward step against any team. Now, sometimes it goes against you and you push back by the, the opponent's brilliant, dazzling play. But Klopp's Liverpool side have never, ever gone into a game and decided to completely change the way they go about it. Arsenal did. And to me, yes, and everything he said in his press conference was right. They were absolutely rock solid. But that's not what Arsenal have been about this year. Arsenal have been about pressing everybody, throttling them in their own half and then playing their own excellent football. He, he sort of took a backward step or two at the weekend and said, do you know what, I don't think we're good enough to do that. So we're going to go the opposite way. And as I say, if it comes to the end of the season and they're second or third, it's one of the games that we'll sit back when we're analysing all this and we'll say, well, maybe they should have did that different there and did that different there. That's where this is a, this is a time issue. But, but then because of how the whole game played out, or certainly Arsenal's change of style, you can't help but wonder if it's kind of master against student type uh, mentality from, from Arteta, which, which I, I don't think Arsenal need to take. Right. I, I, Arsenal are good enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in this league. But I, so I, I'm, I'm with Craig in that I don't understand. And while, yes, it got to a point, and maybe when you leave London, you're thinking if we get back here with a point, we'll take it. Um, or job well, job well done. But that's not really I, I the just, attitude of a team going for the exactly. title, is it? And, I, and I, I just don't... And so it, it, it's difficult. In, in seeing Arsenal this season, it's difficult to explain it. But again, you understand the relationship between those two managers, given that Arteta um, was, was groomed uh, under Pep, and you just can't help but, but wonder. What do you think, Jürgen? 
Well, I think it's going to be super interesting now to see what uh, tactical approach Arteta will have uh, playing Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Mm. You know, because this is, a, this is a big team as well. And, and uh, obviously they have a little bit of their problems this season. Leverkusen is running away, winning the German Championship. And now you have this matchup, Arsenal and Bayern Munich in the Champions League. And there, there's a situation for Arteta now to prove a point. You know, to prove a point, uh, you know, what his, his philosophy is, what his approach is in the real big, big game. And uh, yeah, I'm curious to see that coming up. It will be, it will be fantastic to watch. Jürgen, what did you make of the criticism that some threw at Erling Haaland after that game? Nothing at all. I think, you know, when a striker is not scoring, for me, that's normal. It's, it's, it's human. It's just fine, you know. At the end of the year, there are, you can look at his numbers and his numbers will always be exceptional. Um, and uh, throughout, you know, obviously the club season and then also with, with his national team, uh, for me, it's not a big deal when he has an off game here and there. Roy Keane obviously made headlines by saying that he's like a League Two player. Well, I don't think it's any surprise that some of Erling Haaland's all-round game are, are certainly... There's certainly room for improvement. Uh, but he's an, he, what he is... Erling Haaland is about physicality and goals. When it comes to all-round play, and I'm not suggesting he's a better player, uh, better, uh, he's a worse goal scorer, but he's not on the same planet, say, as a Harry Kane. You know, in terms of his all-round link-up play, right. I mean, Harry Kane could drop off and play passes like a number 10. He can play 50, 60, 70-yard ping passes, round the corner, you name it. Karim Benzema, drifting around the pitch when he was at Real Madrid, flicking little balls and, you know, linking the play up. and dra That's not Erling Haaland. And so when, when City are struggling a little bit in the final third, when he's a little bit off form, and don't forget, he's playing against arguably the two best centre-backs in the Premier League, who did a brilliant, brilliant job at the weekend. They were un unbelievable. How William Saliba... Somebody, somebody needs to send a tape of this, that <laughs> game, <laughs> to Deschamps, <laughs> and say, please, please tell me why this guy doesn't play and, and is not going to play at the, at the Euros. He's got to play at the Euros. So there's that factor as well. But does Erling ha Haaland a lot of times have a bad touch? Yeah. Does his link-up play the best? No. So these are all things that we knew before the game. When he's when his finishing starts to get poor, and it has been a few times this year, thinking back, I think it was the Chelsea game and others, that's when he's going to be criticised because he needs the goals to keep those numbers up, as Jurgen was saying, because lots of lots lots of his other game need polishing. As good as this guy is, there are parts of his game that I don't think he's ever going to be the best at. But as for scoring goals at the moment, he, he is one of the best. Okay, I, I understand the criticism, and it's hard to disagree with a lot of it, given, given what you saw against Arsenal. But let, let's be honest, an, an average player doesn't score 52 goals in a season. He, at, at the best of times, if an average player, everything goes right, you don't get to 52. Um, nor do you have the, the kind of records that, that Erling Haaland had even before his arrival at Manchester City in both the Bundesliga and the Champions League. I, but then, and, and, and to, to him dropping off and, and providing, pr providing more, more link-up play, there were times last season where he wasn't getting a lot of service and you saw him dropping back. And Pep Guardiola gave him instruction, no, I don't want you back in my midfield. You go and, and play up on the shoulders of defenders. So he doesn't want him coming back there. So he's doing what's asked of him. But well, I, I just can't help that while he spent a lot of times on the sideline injured, I, I can't help but feel that that has affected him. Mm -hmm. Because... I, as I said, you, you, are, you cannot be an average player and score 52 goals in the Premier League, ever. Um, so I, and then just give him some of the little things, that chance later on where he could have squared, I think it was to, to Rodri and, and he completely whiffed at it. Those are things that are just so uncharacteristic of, of, of Erling Haaland um, that I wonder that if it isn't a knock-on of some of those injuries that he's had to deal with. But he, he, I think people forget that... He is still <laughs> relatively young. 23. And he's learning. He's still learning parts of the game. that when, right. Jürgen, when Jürgen was playing up front for all these big teams and the national team, it's learning how to use your body as a striker and how to lean into defenders. And when, when, not, when a defender gets tight, too tight to you, how to spin them. And, and all these sort of things that you get better at. And if you don't get better at, then it's a problem. But mm. it's not just about, about the goal-scoring aspect of it. It's about... 
if, Sali if the two centre-halves want to get in a fight with me as a striker, what do I do? Right. Because if I get in a fight back with them and it becomes a wrestling match, it's taken away from the rest of my game. So I've got to find, I've got to find a way of dragging these people into different positions or not getting into a wrestling match in the middle of the park and making it difficult for myself. And I kind of felt when balls were getting played up to his feet or his chest, that's what was happening. That the guys, they, those, one of those two cent halves was already tight to him and he, he, he struggled in that department, but that doesn't take away... It, it, put it one way. There's not a team in the world, yeah. club, foot, club team in the world, that he doesn't walk into and they go, we'll have him. Jürgen, what do you make of what the boys are saying? No, absolutely. I totally agree with Craig there. Um, when you battle constantly two centre-backs, and they're both all the time all over him, sometimes even the, the six drops back, and then they, have, they build a triangle around him, um, this, is, this eats you up, this makes you frustrated, um, and then suddenly you get your chances, you make the right runs, and you're just out of breath. You are just tired a second, and then you don't convert that thing. And that eats you even more up. So at the age of 23, where he's at right now, at the age of 23, is unbelievable. It's, it's incredible what this guy has already done in the game and will continue to do. But he will mature. He will get stronger. He will get calmer inside of him. Uh, he will kind of fight these fights against the center backs differently by time. Um, and he will mature. And, and this is something normal. But... At the end of the day, he still provides all these numbers. He scores these goals, this yeah. incredible amount of goals, and carries an entire nation on his shoulders. You know, whenever he goes on international break, I mean, Norway is just waiting for Erling Haaland. Oh, just be the, please make, make us win these games somehow. Get us somewhere. You know, and this is not, not easy for a kid 23 years of age. So he's done, he's done tremendously until now, and he will do even better in the future. You know, yeah, I, th yeah. I thought a big, big part of the problem was... And I mentioned this to you, was and, and and Arsenal had it as well when they played Porto in the Champions League. That how Porto disrupted the game, <clears throat> and I thought Arsenal did a pretty good job of that, particularly in in the first half. But for me, if very early on, I thought it was in City players' heads. They were chasing Anthony Taylor every time he didn't give a yellow card. And the, listen, this was a huge game, and I thought Anthony Taylor was absolutely right to try and let a lot of challenges go and let it flow, unless there was a, a dangerous challenge, which there wasn't, certainly not early on. But all I ever saw, and by the way, De Bruyne was one of the biggest culprits. So you had two of their best players, De Bruyne and Rodri, every time remonstrating and chasing the referee around. That's as big a problem as Haaland had fighting two centre-halves. Right. Because all of a sudden, and then the crowd get into it as well, and I felt that Arsenal did a great job of really getting under this, although they didn't play particularly well offensively, they got under City's skin. And I think that kind of put City off their stride a little bit. And I'm surprised Anthony Taylor didn't book more City players for... There was one or two of them, by the way, behind his back, got away with the old, you know, that sign, which yeah. is now a bookable offence. So I felt they were off their stride at, at the week. There's something not quite right this, this yes. year, at this moment in time, with this City side. It's not bad, but it is not dazzling. Uh, Jürgen, one last point on this. I was wondering if you would ever do what Pep Guardiola did at the end of the game with uh, Jack Grealish. You know, that's, that's grown over the, the years. And if you then have a bit of an emotional go at something that you want to tell a player right away because you don't want to forget it later on or you don't want to kind of play it down later on, you, you, do, it, you do it right there on the field and you, you carry it out. And, and uh, if the relationship is a positive one, which I really believe it is, because mm. otherwise he wouldn't do it, um, so clearly out there in public, <laughs> then then he's okay with that. He's okay with that. You know, whatever the topic was, whatever they had to to, uh, um, to discuss, I, I think it's all right as long as both of them they respect each other and uh, um, they talk it out. Why not? I just put that quote into context. I do it for the cameras. My ego. It was obviously tongue in cheek when he was asked about it ahead of the game this week. And, no, I think it's a, I th and, and he said, oh, no, I want to make everything about me. It's all about my ego. It's all about me being in front of the cameras. Obviously, he didn't mean it, but that was the way he kind of retorted to the journalists. I, 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 I don't know this. I personally think that's, a, that's the kind of thing he would do in the training ground. Right. I, I think he would, when there's no cameras, I think he, if, if he see Because the one thing this guy has done at every club he's been at, he sets standards for the way they play, right? The standard, the bar 
for players coming in or staying in the team is up there. And that's not just what you see in a weekend or a midweek. That's set. That, t that tone is always set in pre-season all the way through at training. And I think what we saw there is something he would be doing in training as well. When he's seen things that he doesn't like... But does he need to do it so publicly? Could he not have done it down Listen, the tunnel in the dressing room? We have to understand in this very woke period we're in, where everybody gets upset with the merest and slightest little thing. In fact, a lot of people in this life, they wake up in the morning and they're looking to be offended. This is grown men we're talking about in the men's game, right? This is one of the best coaches that has ever graced the game. That's fact, right? He doesn't get to where he's got by doing stuff that the players don't accept. And so this is nothing more than I think, and it's only my opinion, that people saying, ah, oh, this, this is for the cameras, this is for this. I think this is the, t think the, the type of thing that Guardiola and the best coaches are doing day in, day out in the training ground when they're not seeing what they want. I, the I, fact that it was on the field and there's a camera there, it, it, I, I think it was very spur of the moment. I, to that point, this is exactly the type of thing that happens on the training ground or... Uh, to, to your point, um, you would wait till you get back to your dressing room before you have that conversation. But this, this isn't entirely new to, to Pep Guardiola. Yeah. I remember Joshua Kimmich, uh, when he was just coming through at Bayern Munich, Guardiola having just as animated a conversation with him on the park immediately after a game. And he said almost word for word, what, what Jürgen was just saying is because I, I love the kid and I think highly of him. And it was, it was all dependent on how Joshua Kimmich received it. And now Joshua Kimmick went on to become one of the best midfielders on the planet. So you don't, you don't uh, discount that interaction that, uh, that I believe that Pep Guardiola had or the interaction. Similarly, what, how, what comes of this is what Jack Grealish makes of it. He takes it as it was meant. And if that relationship between Grealish and Guardiola is as strong as, 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 as Jürgen uh, is, is suggesting, I think Grealish is the better player for it. But this is outside of the norm, particularly in English football, but not for... Not for Grealish has already accepted this year that he has dipped below right. the standards. And, 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 and so how will this help him raise those standards, being embarrassed in front of... It's not embarrassed. It's not embarrassing. It's not embarrassing. The manager, he did something on the field that his manager wanted him to do differently, right? But Dockers came in and Grealish had injuries at the start. This, look, we all know Jack Grealish had a very good summer. He enjoyed himself. He parted. Then he had the injuries. Then he said a stop-start season. Uh, this guy is, and we've heard him interviewed, is one of the most down-to-earth Grealish that is, guys that he understands. It is not a problem. And if you think a player is going to go away and sulk at a club like Man City over something like this, you're going to be mistaken. Because all Grealish is thinking about is, how can I get in this team regular to play for the rest of the season and possibly win the Champions League again because that could happen. How do I get in the team? And, and it's not sulking because the manager calls you out. Right. It's just by playing better and training harder. And that's what we'll see. Uh, Manchester City, despite that drop-off uh, this season, could still once again do the treble, couldn't they, in the Champions League, Premier League and the FA Cup as well. Their semi-final will be live on ESPN Plus as they take on Chelsea. What a game that'll be at Wembley. Now, that game is live at 12.15 Eastern and then 24 hours later... Craig Wynn is full Coventry kit as uh, they take on at Manchester United.